So it looks like the Muslim woke alliance is not just fracturing, but over, actually. Oh, wonderful. Uh, it looks like the Muslims have essentially pulled out of the alliance with the intersectional saying, hang on a second, we're not up for queering children, actually. Uh, which is not terribly surprising, actually. Yeah, one, one, though, one would might think that these things would be incompatible. Yeah, if you knew anything about Islam, then you probably would have seen this coming, mm. uh, as someone like Julius Avola would have predicted, in fact. Now, Julius Avola, very uh, right-wing and traditionalist, mm. and has some thoughts about lots of things, particularly the modern world. But also, what's interesting is his glowing praise of Islam. Yes, I did watch this. Um, <laughs> I have some objections. I, Obviously, I feel as a like, Christian, you would. Yeah, well, I, I, feel, I feel like our Is Jesus Christ a Socialist podcast went in one ear and out the other a little bit, because I wouldn't characterise Christianity as Luna. I would actually characterise particularly... I'm, I, look, I'm not saying I, I, I characterise it that way. I'm saying Evola characterises it that way. Okay? Well, as, as a gay man, he would. I'm sure he would, but the, the point is that was his perspective, not mine. Yep. I was just accurately representing him. But the point is he's got nothing but stunning praise for Islam. Yeah. Nothing but condemnation for left-wing ideology, mm -hmm. and uh, it shouldn't be much of a surprise that uh, the Muslims are not happy, actually, with the progressives. Uh, and in fact, there's a long history of problems that we can just go through. Go through. So it begins uh, with things like this. We've got, you know, <laughs> queers against Islamophobia. Do you remember when Miley Yiannopoulos did a uh, campus talk? It would have been cut up in one of the SJW cringe compilations of where he said the queers for Palestine was one of the most idiotic groups on the face of the planet because yeah. they're self-negating. That's like turkeys for Christmas. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And yeah. the thing is, I think Lauren Southern got banned for saying uh, Allah is gay, yes. which is something that comes up in a minute, in fact. Uh, but the point is, this alliance is obviously not long for this world, mm. uh, because Muslims are actually not fans of homosexuality. Um, Pew Research did uh, the polling across the Muslim world, and uh, they've got a section in here that talks about what Muslims believe to be morally right and wrong. Mm. And 88% of all Muslims on the entire face of the earth think that homosexuality is morally impermissible. That is reflected in the laws of their countries. Yes, and 90-something percent of them are for Sharia law, so it's you can just generally say Muslims are just not in favour. This is the one, in fact, hmm. where you can see the, the most permissive place is South Asia, where 79% think that homosexuality is morally wrong. Hmm. Uh, but then you've got Middle East and North Africa, 93%, Sub-Saharan Africa, 91%, Southeast Asia, 95%, Central Asia... 85%, look at those liberals. Mm. You know, 85% of them are like, no, homosexuality is wrong in every case. So, just saying, anyone who knew anything about Islam could see that an Islam-gay alliance yeah. <laughs> probably wasn't going to last forever. Yeah, they're, they're hardly going to be doing the predator handshake. Yeah. Uh, and so, uh, I mean, this has been going on for ages, the uh, you know queers for Palestine. Uh, because on the other side, you've got ex-Muslims who are like, well, hang on, aren't we a persecuted minority? And it's like, well, yeah. Hmm. But you're not part of the progressive hegemony for some reason. Uh, and so a few years ago in 2017, uh, Ma uh, Mariam Namazi and uh, a bunch of other progressive ex-Muslims went to uh, a nice parade, had some very politically correct signs. Mm. Again, this got Lauren Southern banned from Britain. Yeah, so, so one might suggest that the alliance was expedient for a time because it might have been the concept of Takia. Now, I'm not sure which exact I don't, th I don't think it's, to. I don't think it goes that deep, to be honest, because I think it was just politically convenient for the immigrants to be immigrants mm. and therefore benefit from the status of being immigrants. And now that status is less coveted. They're like, well, actually, we're going to be able to be mu lean into the Muslim identity. And the Muslim identity isn't a big fan of statements like this. No, but even even within the Muslim paradigm, there are certain sects which might mean that they can subordinate their commitment to some tenets of Islam to advance the overall goals of Islam. But when members of the Islamic community are doing this, they're also seeing that, okay, we're, we're maybe jumping the shark and going a bit too far here, and we have to shore up our boundaries of what actually constitutes our value system. Yeah, I mean, some of these uh, placards are pretty extreme uh, f islamic homophobia east london mosque incites murder of lgbt right so as you can see it is from a progressive frame mm. that they are attacking islam and almost any honest reading of the progressive frame would render islam as a deeply homophobic religion mm. uh just ask what they think should happen to the people of lot uh 
But the uh, the critique here was, quote, these placards are something the EDL or Nazis would carry. I don't think Nazis would carry pro-LGBT anti-Islam placards. No. No. What? Maybe, maybe, who was the fella that ran the uh, pre-SS that was caught in bed with a boy? That's about oh, it. I've and no he was idea. he was he was shot. Other than that, probably not. Yeah, no, I don't. Uh, I don't think so. But uh, but this is a pride parade, remember? And uh, they say, uh, how are they even allowed on the parade? This goes against everything pride stands for. Does it? It's appalling to see that Mariam Namazi's group got away with it. Uh, and so the East London Mosque, obviously, if you go to the next one, they came out and were like, well, hang on a second. We demand an apology for saying that Allah is gay. <laughs> Our track record for challenging homophobia in East London is quite well known. Is it? That's interesting. Uh, for us to see such a mainstream event that is supposed to celebrate tolerance and love used as a hate platform is really quite shocking. So you can see they're using the weapons of ideological warfare the progressives wield mm. against the progressives. Wow, this was inevitable. Our religion doesn't promote hatred or homophobia. Yes, there might be theological topics dealing with homosexual homosexuality in Islam, but that's very clearly separate from promoting hatred and homophobia. This is the Frank Herbert from Dune thing, isn't it? When when I am oh, yes. weak, I will appeal to tolerance and mercy because it's yeah. according to your principles. When I'm strong, I will crush you because it's according to my principles. I think the crushing might have started. Well, what I love about this is like, look, Islam doesn't promote homophobia. It just says it's totally banned. <laughs> It just says that we're not scared of you. Just it, don't like you. It's just put put the the one who does it and the one to whom it is done to death. Yeah, that's literally the the injunction, the Quranic injunction on homosexuality. <clears throat> but that's clearly very separate from promoting hatred and homophobia. What are you talking about? Like it's like wow, that's just such a reach. But uh, anyway, uh, Mariam Namazi was like, well, hang on a second, we're being censored, we're being silenced. We get the next one, John. Uh, yeah, yeah, that, that's going to happen. That's what they will do and uh, of course in this case Mariam Namazi became the uh the outsider the exile mm. can't be islamophobic not on pride day not in pride month not in the sacred month of pride adam <laughs> <You know? laughs> yeah, islamophobia it, it, it does on. have a liturgical calendar it does it's saints and martyrs yeah anyway in 2018 progressive muslims quote unquote there are such things apparently uh they tried to square the circle uh and so they were like well hang on a second uh, on the surface, London Pride celebrates the city as a place of LGBT equality, but this external display of inclusion belies the core that is routed in exclusion. I'm sorry, I I, I love current year ESG yeah. images. Barclays sponsoring yeah, I know. Pride. Yeah. After after the 2008 financial collapse. But the that's the out. Just that, that's no no. But that's the out. I know it is. Yeah, it's it's a PR campaign. No 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 no. That's the out that the progressive Muslims are using. Right. Literally. Like they say, well, pride feels more like an ode to capitalism than a fight for civil rights. You let them in. You took their money. Mm. <laughs> I, f I personally find it troubling that neoliberal ideology is the generator of LGBT rights. As a gay person, well, where's it get where else is it going to come from? As a gay person of Muslim heritage, the inescapable secularism of pride makes me anxious. Well, what could an Islamic pride month look like? How would you draw from the Quran to justify it? Yeah, they are incompatible traditions. So, When Western capitalism is painted as a haven for gay rights, I experience a friction between the Muslim and queer parts of my identity. Well, yeah, because they're incompatible. But if, if Western capitalism didn't exist, would that friction not still be there? Probably not. Would well, probably not, because there might not have been a queer identity to have been generated. Fair, fair point. But assuming that there was... Um, oh, yes, I forget. It's all born this way. Yes, uh, and they say this is particularly sensitive in a context where, for instance, a large number of gay men in Paris voted for Marine Le Pen in 2017, persuaded that her rhetoric, that, by her rhetoric, that Islam was a threat to civic liberties for homosexuals. They also may have just seen videos of the type that Eric Zemmour was tweeting out yesterday. I should have got up the map of where homosexuality is punishable by death. Mm. Weirdly, it's all Islamic countries. Mm. Anyway, Jess Phillips in 2019, of course, that was in 2018. In 2019, Jess Phillips was at loggerheads with the Muslim community of Birmingham Yardley, who were in the right when they were saying, well, hang on a second. And in, in their defence, the Muslim community actually appealed to British law, saying, well, hang on a second, we get a say in our child's education. Hmm. We are conservatives. We do not want you teaching this woke gay propaganda to our children. And uh, Jess Phillips went out there, told them that they were bad people, 
for being Muslim, uh, in not in so many words, of course, and uh, and she ended up having to back down on that, and they took out the homosexual propaganda from the children's schools. So good job. Results have been uh, have been have been taken. Uh, the next one, May twenty twenty two. Just at another university where uh, an image, uh, <laughs> the image posted on the school's Instagram account to mark the International Day Against Homophobia, Transphobia, and Biphobia was met with a firestorm of criticism from people who were offended by the imagery. The post said this was inappropriate and disrespectful because the hijab in Islamic veil has religious and spiritual connotations, and they had obviously used a rainbow hijab. Yeah, this is quite interesting as well because uh, they've, they've been doing this for quite a while. In a cartoon called Young Justice. They resurrected it 10 years later and they brought in a canonically straight white female character and made her an amnesiac Muslim immigrant who was then non-binary and a lesbian. Oh, that's a complicated series of identities. Yeah, it went down like a cup of cold sick, as yeah. I'm sure you can imagine. <laughs> so uh, one, one person wrote, shame on you, uh, shame on you Western for such an insulting mockery post to my religion. Can we can we get the image up in the last article, please, John? There we go. Yeah, I mean, I'm not not surprised that you know Muslims are not happy with this. No, because I know what Islam is about. Uh, anyway, so what happens when Muslims are put in control of Western institutions? Do they respect LGBTQ? Do they protect it? Do they say, you know what? Yeah, you had our back. We're going to have your back. Tolerance is not on the high list of virtues. No. <laughs> no, I mean this is one example. Uh, from a Michigan local city council uh, in suburban Detroit, has uh, apparently got an almost entirely Muslim constituency, and they have an entirely Muslim council, and so they're like, yeah, so we're banning LGBT flags, which is very based, isn't it? This should be the case in every state capital and every state and every government building across the US and all of its weird little satellite states and military capitals. Yeah, Hamtrak, Hamtramck, I think I'm pronouncing that right, city council voted that uh, the only flag, the only flags would be allowed is the prisoner of war flag. I don't know what the prisoner of war flag is. Uh, along with those representing city, state, America and any other nations representing the native countries of immigrant residents. Right, so that's an issue. Colony. Yes. It's a little colony of Middle Easterners in Michigan. And they're voting to ban the gays. Uh, this only applies to city flagpoles, businesses and residents. Uh, city flagpoles, of course, mm. you know, because that's their remit. Businesses and residents can fly any other flags they want. Uh, and so uh, this was not taken well by the uh, LGBT community in Michigan, but we'll come back to them in a minute because let's go to let's go to some other ones first. Uh, you've got the uh, the twin par uh, Muslim and Christian parents uh, fighting against what they describe as groomers in uh, Can Canadian schools, uh, as you you noted, sort of strong Gimli and Legolas vibes here. <laughs> you know, <laughs> do you ever imagine fighting side by side with a Muslim? No, but I can imagine fighting side by side with a friend. I exactly. Uh, and in Vienna, there was a Muslim terror attack planned on a pride parade that was foiled. Um, this was a group of teenagers that had a bunch of knives and axes and apparently were allegedly planning an attack on the parade. The police stopped them. Thank goodness. The suspects were aged between 14 and 20. Blimey, the far right really are recruiting young, aren't they? Yeah. Um, uh, and so, thank God that was stopped. But you can see that they have been like, hmm. What do we? What are we going to target? And they've chosen the Pride Parade specifically for reasons that I think are fairly evident. Uh, coming back to Britain, uh, a local Yorkshire mayor, a place called Keeley in Yorkshire, which I looked up the census data is 41% Pakistani, right. uh, uh, apologised recently for taking part in a Pride event. Who's he apologising to? Who is Mohammed Nazam apologising to for taking part in a Pride event? He says, I write this post today to offer my sincerest apologies for my recent actions, to express my deep regret for any offence or harm caused. A few days ago, I love the idea that he raises a pride flag and there's harm and offence caused. Perfect. A few days ago, I was tasked with the duty of raising a pride flag in the Keeley Town Centre, a responsibility traditionally carried out by the town mayor, the traditional raising of the pride flag. <laughs> Goes back centuries. God, shut up. I deeply regret not carrying out the due diligence for the duties associated with the role I assumed as the town mayor for this year. I wholeheartedly apologise for my participation in the flag-raising ceremony. It contradicts my personal religious beliefs, as many of you are aware. I want to emphasise, again, like, I'm a Muslim, but I can't support pride, is literally what he's saying here, right? 
I want to emphasize that I've also personally represented, uh, repented for this error and reflected deeply on the consequences of my actions. Looking back, I realize I should have respectfully declined the request at the time. While I'm unwavering in my commitment to uphold my deep, really rooted religious beliefs as a faithful Muslim, I want to emphasize that I actively support and promote tolerance for individuals of all faiths, creeds, and colors, as my faith of the law and the land requires me to do. That's interesting. All faiths, yep. creeds, and colors. Now, creed, maybe you could say belief system, but yep. unless you're counting gender ideology as a kind of it's a creed doctrine akin to a religion, yeah. it wasn't included genders there. He didn't go down the full spectrum of, of the Equality Act. Mm. So he is actively excluding the mm. consideration of non-sex-based gender identities from his groveling apology. It is a groveling apology again. Once again, I express my deepest apologies for any harm caused. I love the idea that we can say, no, raising pride flag has harm as a component now. It's akin to a declaration of war. Ha harm is caused by the raising of pride flags. I agree with Mohammed here. Yep. He makes a great point. Maybe maybe if you're progressive, you ought to go talk to Mohammed about that. <laughs> Let's ask him. So a uh, local MP for for, uh, for Keeley uh, was like, uh, maybe you should step down, bro. Shouldn't we? You can't be the mayor of a Yorkshire town if you're not going to raise this pride flag. As tradition states, as you have said, like, if you're in favour of, of not raising this flag, then you're just an evil bigot. Conservative MP, yeah. We'll get to it. Uh, <laughs> Keeley MP Robbie Moore uh, was critical of Councillor Nizam's comments, calling on him to apologise and consider his position. Well, he did apologise to the Muslim community, not to the gay community. He certainly considered his position. Though. Yeah, he certainly did. I was exceptionally proud to join Keeley Pride team for the raising of the flag in Keeley's town squ hall square. Everyone should be free to love who they choose and be who they are. Love is love, said, Count uh, said MP Robbie Moore. Love is love. No, what you don't need to think about it any more than that. Uh, I disagree and reject uh, disagree and reject the mayor's comments. I am proud to live in a country where people can be who they want to be and are free to choose who they love. So who's Robbie Moore? Yeah, he is the Conservative MP for, for West Yorkshire. It's also tiresome. He's, also, he's one of Boris's Lib Dems. You're, you're free who you want to be. Right, well, that man is now identifying as homophobic, so you have to <laughs> leave him alone. Yeah, exactly, I'm sorry. You have to tolerate him, don't you? You know, you're the one who's promoting tolerance, not him. Mm. So yeah, he's uh, he's one of Boris's Lib Dems. Got in twenty nineteen. Uh, very progressive, conservative right. man. I think I think this whole tolerance campaign is just a Trojan horse strategy to prevent Kick a Ginger Day from coming back. Oof. So uh, anyway, there is a deep sense of betrayal from the left f about the Muslim community, which is just beautifully encapsulated in this article. This article, we're going to go through this in detail because this is all just one hundred percent pure gold. You're going to love this, right? So they say in 2015, many liberal going back to Ham Hamtramck, Michigan. Uh, like I said, we, we come back to it because this is just so worth it, right? In 2015, many liberal residents in Hamtramck, Michigan, celebrated as their city attracted international attention for becoming the first in the United States to elect a Muslim majority city council. Now it's an entirely Muslim-run city council, and it just got more progressive from there. They viewed the power shift and diversity as symbolic, but a meaningful rebuke of the Islamophobic rhetoric that was the central theme of then Republican presidential candidate Donald Trump's campaign. Suck it, Trump. We're electing the Muslims to support diversity and advance progressivism, and you're not going to do a thing about it. Turns out that Trump was the strongest ally you had after all. It turns out he's weird, I mean, he, he was technically the first president to take office supporting gay marriage, so, you know, yes, he, Donald has his faults. <laughs> this week, many of those same residents watched in dismay. Now, as a fully Muslim and socially conservative city council, how could this have happened? Who could have predicted this? How could it have been known in advance? This was such a wild revelation. We didn't see it coming. If we elected nothing but Muslims to the city council, it became, quote, socially conservative, right? But anyway, they passed legislation banning pride flags from being flown on city property that had, like many others being flown around the country, been intended to celebrate the LGBTQ plus community. For what? Wow. What do, what do you deserve celebration for? Who knows, but who can believe that the Muslims are like, we don't celebrate that. We're not doing that. But we Theresa May was reading out her favourite Quranic verses. I don't understand. <laughs> Muslim residents packing the city hall erupted in cheers after the council's unanimous vote. <laughs> Just... You had this coming. You, you courted this, you brought it in, and now that you've put it in charge, it's doing what we said it would do all along. You deserve this. I'm enjoying 
watching you re realize these people are not your friends, right? So uh, there has been on the on Hamtramp's social media pages, the taunting has been rela relentless. But I can't read out what the taunting is. No, uh, uh, cigaretteless city. Yes, which is pretty bad, don't you think? Right. In a tense monologue before the vote, Council Member Mohammed Hassan, just average American, uh, shouted his justification at LGBTQ plus supporters. I'm working for the people, what the majority of the people like. Representation matters. This is, a, this is just democracy in action. This is the majority of the people getting what they voted for. Don't you agree with democracy? You knew I was a scorpion before you took me on your back. There's a sense of betrayal, says the former Hamtrank mayor, Cowan Majowski who is a Polish-American who has converted to Islam. Very interesting. Karen Majowski. We support... Listen to this. We supported you when you were threatened, and now our rights are threatened, and you're the ones doing the threatening. It's the Frank Herbert Dune quote in reverse. It literally is. That's one to one. <coughs> it's, it's just incredible, isn't it? <laughs> okay. You were warned... <laughs> You were told. Remember Donald Trump literally banned Muslims from America. <laughs> well, yeah, he used, I, I think he used Obama's terrorist no-fly list and he just yeah. upheld it. And, yeah. and then Like eight different Muslim countries that yeah. they couldn't come from. And uh, you were like, no, that's evil. Joe Biden repealed that. Uh, okay, well, now you have a Muslim majority town, uh, well, probably city, I don't know. But uh, town or city, I don't know how big Hamtrank is actually. But, um, but the point is, they have now voted themselves in and now they're voting you out, and you're like, well, our, we supported you. Maybe you shouldn't. Love is love, says the drowning toad. <laughs> For about a century, Polish and Ukrainian Catholics dominated politics in Hamtrank, a city of, sorry, is a city of 28,000 surrounded by Detroit. By 2013, largely Muslim Bangladeshi and Yemeni immigrants supplanted the white Eastern Europeans. Though the city remains home to significant populations of these groups, as well as African Americans, whites, and Bosnians, and Al Amer Albanian Americans. Right, so whites and Bosnians and Albanians. This is interesting. This is an interesting demarcation because this is something that we've been doing recently in the UK, not us, but our, yeah. our media class. <coughs> uh, they've been parceling out the Albanian migrants from consideration as white European just because they're Muslim. Yeah, although, of course, Albanians are white Europeans. Yeah. Um, According to the 2020 census, some 30 to 38 percent of Hamtrank's residents are of Yemeni descent, 24 percent are of Asian descent, and largely Bangladeshi, giving it a Muslim majority voting bloc. Um, it's almost like they're saying they got replaced. This is something that the former feminists have been pointing out fairly recently, particularly Louise Perry, and she said, "Okay, well, if you thought Christian patriarchy was bad, girls, it's going to get a lot worse. Imagine what." post-Christian patriarchy is going to be like, yep. it's going to be a hell of a lot like pre-Christian patriarchy, and you're not even going to have the ability to complain like you do now. And this would suggest she's right. Put on your burqa. They say, after several years of diversity on the council, some see irony in an all-male Muslim elected government that does not reflect the city's makeup. Aren't, uh, diversity means non-white, so aren't 100%, you know, uh, brown male that's 100% diverse now, isn't it? I think their complaint would be that there's no women there. However... Good point. Uh, that, well, Islam would preclude female representation in government, so you, you, you get what you deserve, I suppose. Yep. There is an overreaction to the situation, and some people are not willing to accept the fact they lost, says uh, the uh, councilman in charge here, the mayor in charge here. Uh, and uh, he's referring to Majowski, and the recent elections, uh, which gave full control of the council to the Muslim politicians. Though the city's Muslims are not a monolith, and some privately told the Guardian they were frustrated with the council, the only leader to public, publicly question the former city uh, uh, council member uh, was the Polish-American woman who converted to Islam. Uh, but Majowski said the majority is now disrespecting the minority. Is it? Is the Muslim majority now disrespecting the minority? Hmm. That's fascinating. That's really Islamophobic. I mean, people said that right up until now when you, a white woman, are saying it. And you're like, well, hang on a second. Now it's happening to me. And I can't. No, no, you're an Islamophobe. You're a bigot. Be quiet. We don't need to hear from you. That's what you said right up until this point. Do you? Oh, anyway, uh, she noted that uh, the white Christian majority city council in 2005 created an ordinance 
to allow the Muslim call to prayer to be broadcast from the city's mosques five times daily. That was your first mistake. It did so over objections of the white city residents, and Majowski said she didn't see the same re reciprocity with the roles reversed. No kidding. It's not about reciprocity, it's always about hierarchy. It's literally the Frank Herbert Dune quote. It's literally... And the, the, the white city residents were before they were replaced by the Middle Easterners, were like, well, hang on a second, we don't want that. And they go, no, 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 this is not... Democracy doesn't work with the majority getting what they want. You're going to do what the minority wants because that's progressive. We're going to give the immigrants representation, don't you understand? And now the immigrants have got the most representation. You don't get what you want. That's just amazing. Uh, but uh, anyway, the, uh, they say, moreover, the white majority council was not always hospitable to the Muslim residents who have previously faced overt racism. Wow, that was the, that was the problem, wasn't it? Now they're not facing overt racism. What now? And with a Muslim majority council in place, more Muslims have been appointed to boards and commissions and hired in City Hall. They are just going to take what they want, they're going to promote their own, and you don't get a say. And in fact, there was some giant orange prophet who said something about this. He, he did warn about this sort of thing uh, at one of his rallies, reading a poem. Can we play that poem, John? <laughs> You're so beautiful, she cried. But if I hadn't brought you in by now, oh heavens, you would have died. She stroked his pretty skin again and kissed him and held him tight. But instead of saying thank you, that snake gave her a vicious bite. Take me in, O oh tender woman. Take me in, for heaven's sake. Take me in, O oh tender woman. Sighed the vicious sake. I have saved you, cried the woman. And you've bitten me, heavens, why? You know your bite is poisonous, and now I'm going to die. Oh, shut up, silly woman said the reptile with a grin. You knew damn well I was a snake before you took me in. Karen Majowski. I'll leave that there. If you appreciated that segment from the podcast The Lotus Eaters, you can go to lotuseaters.com to get access to all the premium contents on the site, such as the Brokenomics series, this episode on rent controls. And if you'd like to find out what else is being put out, you can follow on Getter at lotuseaters underscore com on Getter. Thank you and goodbye.